Hola, my name is Frida, Frida Kahlo, and uh, I think I'm going to derby yoga myself today. Okay, so I was born in Cayoki, Mexico in 1910. Actually, I was born in 1907. But I like to derby people I was born in 1910 because that's when the Mexican Revolution was, and that's what I feel like I can identify with. So 1907, but don't tell. And... My mother was Matilde, she was Catholic, and my father, he was Guillermo, and he was Jewish, and I like him better. My father was an immense example to me of tenderness, of work, and above all, understanding and problems. So I was born in Cayoque, Mexico, and then when I was five years old, I was stricken with polio, and my leg stopped growing, and people call me Peg Leg Frida. It was not fun. I was very embarrassed. I felt like a loser. Por mi camino, por mi camino. Now, let me tell you a sad story. I have a lot of sad stories in my life. This is a big one. It pretty much ruined my life. So on sep September 17th, 1925, me and my boyfriend Alejandro, we were coming home from school on a bus, and all of a sudden, we got in a terrible, 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 terrible accident. And our bus collided with another carriage. And a couple of people were killed on the spot. I was not, but I was severely injured. I broke my spinal column, my collarbone, my ribs, my pelvis, my right foot. I dislocated my shoulder, and this is my favorite, a metal rod came through my pelvis and out my shoulder. And it hurt very, very, very bad. So after the bus wreck, I was in bed for three months, and for nine months after that, I had to wear a bunch of plaster corsets. This was when I started painting, because I was so bored, and I loved to paint, and then my mother had some easels made for me, and I got a mirror put over my bed so I could see myself, and I could paint. And my father was an artist, so that's probably where I got my artistic, you know, my interest. Once I recovered, I joined up with a circle of artists. And intellectuals and in 1928 my friend Herman de Campo introduced me to a group of people centered around the Cuban communist Julio Antonio Meya. Meya loved this artist named Tina Madati and it was through her that I met Diego. Ay 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 Diego Rivera what a wonderful mur muralist and a wonderful man I always admire him and oh my god, did I have a crush on him? A crush on him? I thought he was so cute. But anyway, I met him, we became friends, and he encouraged me to pursue my career as an artist. So we hang out for a little while. Ooh, we're hanging out, we're having a good time. Yes, I love to hang out with Diego. And oh, next thing you know, we decide to get married. This is a painting I did of me and my husband, Diego. I was a lot smaller than him. I like to often say that I am the dove and he is the ugly fat frog. So in 1933, after we got married, we went to the U.S. because Diego was being commissioned to work on an art project, a mural there. And this was a very difficult year for me. Very difficult year for me. I like to get up close in the camera when I talk about something serious. You know how serious I am? I don't smile very often. And often you can't tell I'm moving my lips, but I'm talking to you. So anyway, we went to America. And this was a difficult time for me because I got pregnant. I got pregnant. And guess what? Because of my bus accident. Ay, ay, ay. It's very hard for me to talk about. It was a very sad time in my life. Because of my bus accident, I had to get an abortion because there were so many medical problems. You know, I broke my pelvis. I had a metal rod go through my pelvis. So I had a little trouble having a baby, so I had an abortion. I painted this after I got out of the hospital. It was very sad. That is me laying on a bed. There's my pelvis. 
There's my baby. I'm so sad. But I really, really, really want to have a baby. So I got pregnant two more times. And neither of those worked out. It was a very sad time for me. I just wanted to go back home to Mexico. And me and Diego, we started having some trouble in our marriage. I mean, I knew he fooled around. I always knew he fooled around. And I kind of did too with a couple other women. And a couple other men. I'm bisexual. You might hear that. Yes, it's true. I'm bisexual. So, uh... I was kind of sad because Diego was always cheating on me. But after he cheated on me with my sister, Christina, I was very mad like this. I make my eyebrows mad like this. I was so mad I had to leave. I wanted a divorce. And that was it. This is a picture of my sister, Christina. She was the one that fooled around with my husband, Diego. I was very sad. So I cut all of my hair off. See? Yes, I cut my hair. And I look like a man again. Uh, shortly after my divorce from Diego Rivera, I completed this self-portrait of two different personalities. In this picture, I process the emotions surrounding my separation and marital crisis. Part of the person which was respected and loved by Diego was the person in the uh, Mexican Frida costume, while the other Frida wears a European dress and the hearts of the two women me are exposed and are connected by just one artery me the rejected European Frida is in danger of bleeding to death look I'm getting my dress all dirty with blood my life was was full of sadness and pain I had to undergo 32 op operations in my life. I couldn't bear children. And I guess Diego and I didn't have the best relationship, but I always loved him. I love him so much. I love you, Diego. Diego was always on my mind. So, enough about my life. Let's talk about my artwork. So maybe I like to draw some self-portraits. Let me show you some self-portraits. Okay, um, this is a picture, a mural that Diego painted. And if you look at the person in the red shirt, that's me. Yeah. He made me look like a man because he needed a face and I was his model. And so he put me in the mural. He was pretty talented. This is this is a picture that I painted of um, me standing between America and Mexico. And I wanted to go home. Anyway. Many people consider my work surrealist. But my art is my life and my feelings and it is me. It is, it is what is on my mind. I did a lot of work. I did a lot in my bed because in the late 1940s and into the early 50s my health started to disintegrate. Oh no. It probably didn't help that I was doing a lot of drinking and maybe a little drugs. I don't know. But uh, I was very sad because I had never had any babies. Diego came back to me, by the way. We, we kind of worked things out, you know, after I divorced him. We still love each other. We're still best friends. And so he was there for me when I was sick. Oh, look at me and Diego. He loved me so much. You're so cute. He loved me so much and I'm so sick and he's kissing me anyway. Oh, God. You guys are so cute. Okay. On July 13th, I died, which means you're listening to the voice of the ghost of Frida. Or maybe you're listening to a puppet. Or maybe you're listening to Elizabeth Bro, who really enjoyed liking doing a Mexican accent. But, uh, yeah, I died. Well, even though I'm gone, hate it or love it, my art lives on forever. My art lives on forever. And so does my unibrow. And then and young and lovely, the girl from Ipanema goes walking. And when she passes, each one she passes goes, ah. When she walks, she's like a samba that swings so cool and sways so gently that when she passes. 
look. Don't we look alike? We're so pretty. We're so pretty. I love you, Frida. And I love women. And I love men. And I love Diego. And I love art. And I want to have babies and I can't. And I'm so sad. Mm -hmm.